Hello, welcome to this new video produced by Cat Labs where we will be discussing the prototype Mint Instant Con 70 RF camera, RF70 camera that we got so graciously from Mint Camera. Uh, we've been testing this for about uh, a week now. Uh, it's been in the hands of uh, a couple of professional photographers who are out and about in Boston trying to see what this camera can do. Uh, and we've come up with a list of things that uh, we think are really wonderful about this camera. Uh, but just to get them out of the way, let's bring out a list of a couple of things that were uh, a little, we found a bit of issues with. And I'm just going to preface and say we're doing this video outdoors today, a beautiful Boston sunny day. Uh, so excuse the background noise. Uh, and I hope uh, you can hear everything I say. But I wrote all this stuff down, so I'm just going to go off the list, and then we're going to introduce the camera uh, and see what we can do. The build quality is very nice, and the finishes are excellent. We, we personally don't like leather covers because of their uh, moral repercussions, but uh, they also have a tendency to deteriorate over time. Uh, but generally, the camera is very nicely finished. And to open it, you kind of press the side here and bring the lens out. So uh, the camera itself feels very sturdy, and so it's it's really nice. And evidently, it's been well thought out. And, uh, the execution of some of the things still needs some work, maybe because this is a prototype and maybe because this is just the limitations of what this can do, uh, it's re limited to, to these things. The, so basically when this lens is not focused to infinity, uh, you can't really close the camera. The, the range finder on this camera is coupled to the lens in a way that isn't perfectly smooth, so when you focus back and forth, the range finder cam takes a little bit of time, there's a lag there uh, until it falls into place. And it's not always clear if you're focusing on where the lens is or where the focus patch is on the rangefinder. So there is a discrepancy there, and it does take quite a while to get used to it. But I can tell you that at the end of the week, we've been shooting all in focus pictures, whereas in the beginning of the week, it was a lot more difficult to estimate. So you really have to know the camera and have a good feel for it until you get uh, those sharp images, though. Uh, there is a learning curve. It's pretty well attainable. But the camera. Uh, it's not a problem, it's just a feature on the camera. It doesn't have a coupled rangefinder, so the viewfinder and the rangefinder are separate windows. And so you do have to look through two uh, eyepieces to get uh, the focus image and then to frame it. Hopefully, uh, MIT can eventually evolve and develop uh, a unified coupled rangefinder. That would be a huge improvement. The frame lines are not always very visible, so when you're Kind of aiming through it, it's difficult to frame your image. There's also no parallax correction. If there is, then it's not very good because the closer you get, the more the parallax shift is. And there is a gap, quite a distance between the lens and the viewfinder. So we did find a lot of times that we needed to either step back or recompose, taking that into consideration and ignoring the built-in frame lines. This is not the design problem. This is really just a systemic problem. The instant film that this takes, the Instax wide, is rated at around 800 ISO. On this camera, you're limited to f22 and a 500th of a second shutter speed, which means that on a bright sunny day like this, you can't really shoot without the use of a built-in or without the use of a neutral density filter. Um, a neutral density filter would take some kind of calculation because the uh, built-in light meter of the camera also has some kind of discrepancy. It doesn't always nail it right on, uh, especially when it's super bright or when it's very dark. So we're not sure how the light meter here uh, meters or where the position is, but it kind of doesn't matter. You know, we, we try to work on all the settings and no matter what we did, we always got some kind of discrepancy and it took a while for us to get the exposure right. The limitation of the shutter speed really means that if you're shooting outdoors at this level of light, you're going to get some kind of overexposure. So you need to be consider be cognizant of that and remember that as you're shooting. Uh, on the other hand, on the flip side, there is a built-in flash option, which is really neat. Um, but the output of this flash is very limited in terms of uh, power, so the distance or the amount of illumination that you get from the flash is limited. Also, the light meter, when it's dark, isn't really uh, working very well with the flash, and I'm not exactly sure how the flash is going to work, though we did get word from Mint that the flash isn't finalized on the prototype, so hopefully on the production cameras the flash settings will be more sophisticated. And the viewfinder doesn't give any kind of indication or information as to whether or not 
uh, or what speed you're on or what kind of exposure setting you're on. So you kind of have to guess what the camera is going to do based on your shutter setting and the ambient light situation around you. And that, that can be a bit of a challenge to keep reminding yourself that there are two separate settings that need to be maintained because you're not going to get a reminder in the viewfinder. There is a frame counter and a battery um, gauge, very useful things because the camera runs on batteries, requires batteries to do pretty much everything. Opening and closing process of the camera does require some force, you know, it's not the most refined process of, every, of any cameras of its kind that we found. But then the shutter release button, which has a really cool threaded option for uh, remote cable release, the shutter uh, button, the shutter release button is extremely sensitive. So between a half press and a full press, it's a tiny little difference and a tiny little press will get the shutter to fire. When you're shooting, you have to get a very good feel for that finger to make sure that it's not, um, that you're not pressing it accidentally. This is a nice cool feature. This is the eject uh, button. So that's, this rewind lever supposedly is what causes the camera to spit out the shot after you've shot it, uh, the, the image after you've shot it. and. Um, it's kind of a strange setting because it's very easy to trip it. Uh, again, it's very sensitive and it doesn't require the full travel of the, uh, of the release lever and it has a kind of a very um, uh, soft feel to it. So, um, you know, I, th I think there sh we would have loved to have a more robust safety feature on ejecting the image that requires either a double press or a safety button something to prevent you from accidentally releasing the image. Then again, there's also no indicator to tell you whether or not you've already exposed a shot on the piece of film that's currently on top. So um, an indicator like that, for example, we've loaded the, the shot, uh, we've ejected the safety sheet. So you have to remember that there may be a safety card in there once you load the pack before you start shooting. So it's always a good habit to load the camera, immediately shoot out the safety card and then get shooting. Otherwise, you might get into a situation where you're composing this really elaborate shot, you press the button, you shoot, oh, and there comes the safety card. So, so those were all the kind of gripes that we had with this camera, but I have to say that with all those gripes, we've had huge fun with this camera. This camera is really very cool. It does a lot of cool things. It has pretty much everything that we'd want in a pro instant camera. Uh, it touches everything, manual control, focus, uh, focus control, framing control, um, flash control, uh, the um, and of course the manual exposure and the manual aperture, the shutter speed and aperture control, which are phenomenal. The lens itself is really very nice. So once you do get to nail this camera down, you get awesome, awesome exposures. And here are just a couple examples. So these are shot on black and white, and we'll we'll add a couple more samples down the line. But these look pretty much like real black and white prints, darkroom prints, because the camera is able to produce this amazing sharpness and give you a very good control and exposure. So an enormous uh, capability of this camera to produce uh, wonderful images. Uh, all the people that were working with this camera in our shop and our the pro photographer, uh, Tess Shefflin, that was using this camera uh, for about a week, ultimately came back and said, this camera is fun. It's huge fun. There really is more of a feel of a camera that you can work with, that you can kind of adjust and tame into your inner desires of what you want to do and creative capabilities of what you want to do with a camera more so than you can do with an Instax. And uh, in that regard, uh, the Mint uh, manual control option of this camera drives this the entire way. And here's uh, just a sample of what it can do. And with this, this is the uh, last shot that we're going to take with this camera, and we're sending it on to the next uh, beta testers. Thank you, Mint, so much for letting us try out this camera. Uh, we're going to leave the link uh, for the information about the Instant Con RF70 uh, just below this video. Um, and thank you again. Oh, check this out. It's coming out. Instax wide. Isn't it? Kind of like a magical thing uh, that happens right before your eyes. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned. We have lots of content coming this month towards you, uh, from uh, large format cameras uh, to a new uh, ultralight hyper camera from uh, Stenopeka and uh, lots of other cool things. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe.